Hello, everybody. Welcome to Premier League predictions for round seven. And get you, Mikey, what a performance last week. So for all of you wise guys in the comments that have a pop at us, listen to Mikey's score because he beat me 15-4 last week. That's a 24-25 season record. That Let us know in the comments if you managed to beat that. Mikey, you got four results. Bang on. You could be retiring today if you'd... Um, partaken in some, um, well, you know what, on those particular results. You've got Newcastle 1, Man City 1. That's a good shout, ever winning against, backing against Man City. Uh, Brentford 1, West Ham 1. Everton 2, Palace 1. And Bournemouth, just to rub salt into the wounds last night for me in the Monday night. Um, Bournemouth 3, Saints 1. Sometimes you have to hold your hands up, beaten by the better guy. So Mikey moves 4-2 ahead. And as the aggregate, points lead now 53-46. Good morning and congratulations, Mikey. Thank you, Ben. Yeah, after you won last week, I thought I might as well start trying now. Um, <laughs> so, But one thing I, I will point out, somebody in the comments, and I know it sometimes is annoying when people in the YouTube comments criticise your predictions because no nobody knows for sure. But he did say... you. You're pretty much spot on, but Fulham are going to beat Nottingham Forest. And there was a real sort of back and forth between Fulham and Nottingham Forest fans. If I had gone for that, then, yeah, it would have been a, a ridiculous um, score. But, um, but yeah, I was I was pretty pleased, pretty pleased with those predictions. Um, I'm looking at my predictions for this week and they seem as random as ever. So <laughs> who knows what what's going to come out next week? Yeah, let us know. Um, I'm sure someone's got more than 15 in the comments, but if you do, please let us know and we'll we'll flag it up. We'll pin the um pin the comment here on the Benjamin Bloom Football Channel. We're also simulcasting on the Blue Monday channel um this season as well. Copy and paste the fixtures in the description there. Get your own predictions in. Score yourself one point if you get a correct outcome. I got four last week, but that was kind of irrelevant after my, what Mikey did. Um, give yourself three points for a correct scoreline. It's harder than you think. And give yourself a bonus point if you get a correct scoreline. And that scoreline has five or more goals in. Mikey, here we go with the Saturday lunchtime game up first. Crystal Palace versus Liverpool. Yeah, and Palace still looking for that first win, aren't they? I had their game at Everton described to me by my father-in-law as a game between two poor teams. And I think even even Ezra's getting a little bit of heat off the Crystal Palace fans at the moment. They're not happy with his contributions off the ball and maybe a little bit too casual at times in possession. Um, there's maybe a case for Eddie and Ketia getting, getting a game in the centre-forward position. He's sort of been playing off John philippe Mateta up till now. Um, as for Liverpool, they were a little bit loose against uh, Wolves, Ben. I watched that game. They they definitely weren't at their best. Um, a little bit disconnected and they're playing in the Champions League, but they've got the Tuesday night game against Bologna. I think it's a Tuesday night game. Um, so that will have already happened by the time this comes out. But yeah, a good chance that there'll be changes, especially as it's an early kickoff um, for them. Just brings up memories of Jurgen Klopp, doesn't it? Liverpool being in the early mm. kickoff after Champions League. But here we go. Uh, I'm going for Liverpool to still edge this one and Palace to carry on looking for that first win. I'm going Palace 1, Liverpool 2. Yeah, so I've backed Liverpool consistently, Mikey. But I'm going to go for the draw here on the basis of Palace kind of, you know, can be nice and tight when they need to be. Glasner's under a little bit of pressure now. Um, I think a draw would be seen as a good result. You mentioned the early kickoff and the Champions League. I do take your point it's Tuesday, not Wednesday or even Thursday now. But I love I love a 1-1 to start with. So here it comes, Mikey. Um, Palace 1, Liverpool 1. And I'm up first for Arsenal versus Southampton. And spoiler alert, I'm going for a home win here. Um, Southampton, Mikey, so poor in the first half against... Um, Bournemouth in the Monday night football. Arsenal, now you were correct that Man City were going to drop points and they did. So Arsenal are back on terms. And I think um, this is going to be pretty straightforward. So I'm going to play for a bonus point. Arsenal five, Southampton nil. 
Oh, okay. Um, <laughs> this isn't going to be a this isn't going to be a popular um, show for the Southampton fans. Sorry, Saints Arsenal. fans. Sorry. Yeah, I'm going for Arsenal four, Southampton nil. Um, the Arsenal survived a little bit of a scare against Leicester, um, and they're also in Champions League action. But again, I think that's another Tuesday night one. Um, maybe a bit of rotation we might see Raheem Sterling and Gabriel Jesus. Um, the only thing I can say for Southampton is they'll they'll like playing on that Arsenal pitch. It's it's a nice pitch for playing out, but maybe not the right opposition. But yeah, yeah. Arsenal for Southampton nil. Yeah, and remember, as always, um, if we both predict the team to lose and they go on a win, we will give a public apology, Southampton fans. And it's a 9-0 deficit we're going for here, uh, Mikey. Uh, still bottom of the table, Wolves visit Brentford, who always score in 60 seconds. Um, just to go back to Southampton there, Ben, you mentioned the words 9-0. Um you're not supposed to mention that um, if you're no, trying sorry. to keep Southampton fans happy or Ipswich for that matter. But yeah, Brentford, it, all, surely all of their fans are going to be in position um, for <laughs> yeah. kickoff in this one just to see if it's going to happen again. They love an early goal, but unfortunately, none of those three games where they've scored in the first minute have um, led to victories. Um, no win in September, but they've got Brian of Burma. We speak about him every week, don't we? He's, he's bang in form. Um, Wolves, I could hear the fans getting really frustrated against Liverpool, just too too slow, um, too indecisive at the at the attacking end. Wolves did win 4-1 at Brentford last season, and that was under Gary O'Neill, but I'm going to go for Brentford to win this one narrowly. I'm going 2-1 to Brentford. Yeah, I was going to go along those lines, Mikey. I've got... Can't really see Wolves going there and winning at the moment. I think they're going to be one of the clubs that benefit from the international break. And I know the fixtures are pretty rancid afterwards as well. Um, do you know what? I will double you up. I'm going to go for a Brentford a Brentford win here. I just think Wolves are going to want to park this first block of games and it's not going to end well. You've taken the 2-1, so I'm torn between a 1-0 or a 2-0. I'll go for the... Go for the 2 0. Sorry, Wolves fans. No vendetta, but Brentford 2, Wolves 0. And it's Leicester City versus Bournemouth, Mike. And we're kind of looking at Bournemouth as, you know, too good for the um, relegation battle and teams down the bottom. We're looking at Leicester as not terribly competent at the moment and not terribly high on morale. I looked at the stats, even though they got back to 2 2 against Arsenal. Arsenal could have scored about 15 goals in that game looking at the stats. So I'm going to back Bournemouth to go to Leicester and win. I know Bournemouth do skew better at home, don't they? Um, so I'm going to go under, should I go under 2.5? No, I don't think I will. I'll go both teams to score instead. Leicester one, Bournemouth two. Okay, um, I'm going for Leicester two, Bournemouth two. Leicester have been really competitive in all of their games. I mean, maybe not so much against Arsenal, but they did manage to get those those two goals to bring themselves back into it. So you have to give them a little bit of credit for that. Um, goals have finally come for for Bournemouth. Semenyo um, is is getting the headlines at the moment. He's a somebody I'm sure you enjoyed watching in the Championship a few years ago. Ben, mm. he's now getting his flowers in the Premier League, isn't he? So I'd expect him to score. Um, but yeah, I'm I'm back in Leicester to get another point out of this one. I'm going Leicester to Bournemouth two. Are you going to back Manchester City to drop points again at home to Fulham? No, uh, I'm not. <laughs> but, I, <laughs> but I think it's going to be pretty close. Um, obviously, not having Rodri makes them weaker in possession and out of possession. And it's a little bit of a conundrum in midfield. And obviously, it's a good job that they got Gundogan in on the sort of towards the deadline in August. But he hasn't really hit the ground running yet. And he had quite a poor game up at Newcastle. It's a difficult game, that one. And they've also really been missing Phil Foden as well. He hasn't been able to play a huge amount of football yet, but maybe he returns to the team here. Brilliant September for for Fulham. Um, they'll go to City with confidence and they've got two players in form who have hurt Manchester City in the past in Raul Jimenez and Adama Traore. But Fulham, Ben, haven't won in fact, I think they've lost their last 16 games at Manchester City, which <laughs> I know it's Man City, but that is a pretty wretched run. Um, so I'm going for a narrow Manchester City 2-1 win here. OK, I'm going to do it. 
I'm going to back Fulham um, because we we very rarely back against Man City. When I'm doing the League One stuff, Birmingham, the, the Man City in League One, we just back them to win every week. I agree with what you say um, in terms of the weaknesses and, you know, are they there to be got at right now? And you're right. They've got exactly the players. You're going to get Man City. You're going to have not much of the ball. Get them on transition. Traore is the guy. And you're right, he's punished them before. So let's go. Manchester City 1, Fulham 2. And wow. Yeah. If that it's comes in. Result of the season so far, yeah, isn't it? We will see. We will see. Um, and on we go to West Ham versus Ipswich Town. And for the second time this season, Mikey, I'm going to back Ipswich Town to win. Now, um, Ipswich fans were very upset with us last week, Mikey, um, for not forecasting that a team that was in the Championship last year were uh, going to be a team that's in the Champions League. So hopefully they'll be happier with us this week. Had a few messages on Twitter, a few messages in the comments on YouTube, Mikey, from West Ham fans saying, watch your game against Villa. I think you're going to beat us. We're not very good at the moment. We're not very confident. The um, stadium can turn if you start the game well, which, which haven't been able to do away from home, but have done at Portman Road. So I am going to back the team that I support to win their first game of the season. West Ham nil, Ipswich Town one. Okay, yeah. Can I just point out that I only um, went for Ipswich to lose last week as reverse psychology, and it, it very nearly worked for me, didn't it? Um, but I'm not going to. I'm not going to do that this week. I'm going to go for Ipswich to win as well. Shock horror! This is the Battle of Colchester, Ben. The two best supported clubs in in the little town of Colchester. Um, West Ham. Um, I'm going West Ham one, Ipswich Town two. Um, I think that those West Ham fans are going to demand a win here. And what I will say in their favour, in their favour, is I could see Jared Bowen giving Leif Davis a really difficult afternoon because he can go on the inside and he can go on the outside. We've already seen right wingers give Davis a, a difficult game, but I think we're gonna we're a dangerous counter attacking side. West Ham are going to demand that they come forward with the ball, and I think we're going to be able to to hit them on the counter. All eyes on Calvin Phillips as well, Ben. Can it? Can mm. he do it? Yeah. Um, by the way, the public apology rule doesn't apply to any Ipswich games this season. So there'll be no apology to West Ham if they do um, if they do beat Ipswich. But we've doubled up again, Mikey. What could possibly go wrong? Uh, first win for Everton last weekend. Everton versus Newcastle. Yeah, who knew, Ben? All Everton needed to do this season to, to get a win was to just go behind rather than take the lead. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> It's the first time Dyche has been able to give them a bit of a rocket at half time because up till now they've they've done all right in first halves. Um, I know that I've I've read that uh, NGI has 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 been quite impressive for Everton and obviously we we've, we've spoken about Dominic Calvert Lewin but Dwight McNeil was the one that stepped up and and scored what a goal that first one Palace. fantastic goal really really nice finesse finish from him. I think he's been a good solid player for Everton under Sean Dyche but. It, I think it's time for him and this team to step up and really produce numbers because they've kind of lacked that in the attack in the attacking third. They haven't had a player that's been a talisman for them over the last few years. And maybe Dwight McNeil could be that man. Uh, as for Newcastle, did brilliantly against Manchester City. I had a feeling that Anthony Gordon was going to cause them problems in transition and, and he did and he scored. I think he'll be a huge threat again in this game. Obviously, all eyes on him. He's going to be getting a lot of heat off those Everton fans. I'm going to go for the draw here. I'm going Everton 1, Newcastle 1. I've gone for a Desmond. So I'm also on the draw. I'm going Everton 2, Newcastle 2. I think it will be entertaining. And I'm standing by my theory that Everton weren't as bad as that. What did they lose? The first four in a row or something, didn't they? I thought they were going to come good. And I think the goals are going to start to flow now. Entertaining game and a Desmond there. And I'm up first, Aston Villa versus Manchester United. Um, obviously saw Villa in the flesh on um, Sunday. Impressive football team, beautifully well put together. And they're back at home. We seem to have mentioned this game loads, but they play Bayern Munich in the Champions League, don't they, in between us recording this and that fixture. But Manchester United is a is a car crash, isn't it? You, you, can, you can just tell when... 
I know it's a cliche, Mikey. He's lost the dressing room, the players and the managers. It just doesn't work, does it? So I cannot see Manchester United going to Aston Villa and winning. Uh, so Villa three, Manchester United one. OK, and this is traditionally a game, Ben, that Manchester United always win in the Premier League. Always. I can't bring myself to to go for that. They they even did it last season under Ten Hag. Um, I think every time that Eric Ten Hag looks finished, he manages to pull a result out. And that is why I'm going for a draw here. I'm going for Aston Villa 2, Manchester United 2. It United are playing Porto on Thursday night, so it's not going to be... Thursday? Thursday, yeah. Wow. Um, whereas, obviously... Villa have got the the harder game against Bayern Munich, but that's earlier on in the week, so they've got a little bit more of a rest period. What an um, occasion game, that's going to be, by the way. Yeah, superb. This this is what the fans have been... Well, I don't even know if they had been dreaming of it, to be honest. I don't think they'd even <laughs> considered that they were going to get in the Champions League. But yeah, incredible job Unai Emery's done. But I just fancy United to bounce back this week with a result against Porto and then a, a decent draw at Villa Park. And it's Cole Palmer versus Nottingham Forest. <laughs> yeah, I've got it down as the alternative transfer strategy derby, this one. Um, it's it's hard not to predict goals at Stamford Bridge as well. We've just They don't seem to be able to defend Chelsea, but Cole Palmer's just incredible, isn't he? And a really good partnership that he's forming with Nicholas Jackson as well. He's, he's having a good second season for them. Forrest have been a little bit disappointing at home, um, but have looked dangerous on on the road and they've got Morgan Gibbs White back from suspension for this one. So I can definitely see them scoring a couple of goals. I don't think this will be a typical Nuno game. I'm going for a high scoring one here. I'm going Chelsea three, Nottingham Forest two. Would you believe that's a scribble? I have three, two wow. down here. So um, yeah, what I will do is I'll make that three, one, but, and you can turn this down because I turned down your request last week. Can I have a bonus point if I go for back-to-back hat-tricks for Cole Palmer? So Chelsea 3-1 and another hat-trick for the bonus point. Yeah, you can have a bonus point for that. <laughs> Get in there. That just means you're kind of the mix. You've got, you got points They to could spare, be three penalties, anyway. couldn't they? <laughs> yeah, you've got points to spare here, haven't you? So um, it is Brighton versus Spurs. Ooh, crikey. Um, this is a difficult one, isn't it? Brighton... Maybe are not as good as we thought they were going to be, but I suppose they've, I they've don't got really... quite a lot of players coming back this week. Ben, yeah, the players that should be returning. So Spurs, Jao Pedro, Veltman, Van Hecker, Adingra, all returning. Spurs, I don't trust as much, but yet they had a really, really good win. Um, oh, if I'm going in on Spurs, it's just always famous last words, isn't it? Trust in Spurs. But let's do it. Uh, Spurs to go to the Amex and get the win. It'll be both teams to score, won't it? Um, Brighton 1, Spurs 2. Not sure, though. Yeah. I was trying to steer you in the direction of Brighton there, Ben. Um, with the Are you having him? Players returning, but I've also gone for a Tottenham win here. <laughs> okay. I, I've gone for Brighton 1, Tottenham 3. Um I think that Spurs are just quite streaky, and once they start clicking in the at the attacking end, things things just seem to work for them. They've got a trip to Budapest on on Thursday night. I've got a my mate Alex. Shout out to him. He managed to get a ticket for that one. He's looking forward to these more obscure Europa Europa League games, and yeah, they, so they've got that on Thursday. But I don't think at the moment that's going to be too much to their detriment because I think they just want games and. They want to keep scoring goals. So, yeah, I'm, I think this would be another entertaining game, but Brighton just a little bit too loose at the back. Brighton one, Tottenham three. There you go. Um, Mikey's going to be hoping for a repeat of last week where he scored 15 points. Let us know how you get on in the comments. Copy and paste um, the fixes out of the description. We love um, seeing your efforts. And if you do score... Anything over double figures is good. Anywhere near 15 would be incredible. Let us know in the comments and we'll um, pin that one up high. Remember, give yourself a point for correct outcome. Three for correct scoreline and a bonus point. Um, everyone gets a bonus point if Cole Palmer scores a hat-trick this week. We just, we just, we just hand them out willy-nilly. But um, five goals or more and you get a four-point score, your bonus point there. And we'll see... If I can claw back some of the points that Mikey quite brilliantly accrued last week, 
Um, and we will see you back, not next week, because it's international break, but we'll be back in a fortnight's, fortnight's time fortnight. with more. <laughs> with more Premier League predictions.